Passe qu'il vit, je n'ai rien à craindre, mes lendemains sont assurés entre ses mains, il tient ma Éternité, je sais qu'il vit. I was just asked to sing it in French tonight, so I did. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. As he lives, all fear is gone, because I know, I know he holds the future. Life is worth a living just because he lives. He's starting at seven o'clock, Tom. Hopefully. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this uh, live prayer event. This is day six of the week. Um, details of what we're doing tonight have been written up for you. Uh, it's based around some of the observations that we made as we did a prayer walk around Norton in Sheffield. Um, there'll be opportunity for you to make your comments and uh, obviously read them and pray for them later. Now this song takes me a, a long way back but it, uh, it's a great sing-along. Uh, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. How lovely are the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news, acclaiming peace, announcing news of I got rid 
And it fits in, of course, with the Nehemiah theme, that song. Um, just ended. Thought of it this morning, started singing it. Thought, must do it tonight. It's been years. Going to read from chapter eight of Nehemiah. Um, we've we've moved on a bit. Um, obviously, there were still threats. There was still opposition. There were lies going on. But Nehemiah kept his focus. He kept the people's uh, focused on the work that God had called them to do. And we read in chapter six, verse seven, that the wall was completed in 52 days with the help of God. It's a remarkable thing in itself. You think about it in those days without any mechanical help in 52 days, they built the walls and the gates around Jerusalem. What a remarkable effort. Now we're coming on to chapter eight. I'm going to miss out some of the names, mainly because it'll take me a long time to get the pronunciations right. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. And he read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, the women and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high platform built for the occasion. Beside him on his right stood an awful lot of people. On his left there was a, a, a huge gang as well. And Ezra opened the book. And all the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. And Ezra praised the Lord, the great, um, praised the Lord, the great God. And all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. And then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And the Levites, who were all listed there, instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people could understand what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people have been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our God, to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a sacred day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food, and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Um, my Bible has a, has a lovely heading to this. It talks about Nehemiah encountering more than broken walls in Jerusalem. He also encountered broken lives, lives that had been in despair, lives that had been in fear, uh, no no protection, no walls, uh, the place not being the place that they'd uh, they'd lived in before. Exiles had returned, had, had come to a, a mess, and and obviously they were in a mess as a result of it. And Nehemiah felt that having having fulfilled a purpose of building the walls, that he now needed to bring the people back to their personal faith in God. And that's not based upon an emotional experience. It's based upon God's word. So Nehemiah told Ezra, who's of course well known and also has a book in the Bible, to read the book of the law of Moses. That's the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, if you like, to the people. So there was this public reading of scripture, something we're told not to forsake, not to neglect to do in the, in the New Testament, aren't we? And all who were old enough to understand what was being read were there. See, the people had seen God at work. They'd heard Nehemiah's testimony and the remarkable way in which God had allowed him to, to come back home and also bring provisions with him and then get on with the work and how remarkably quickly it had been happened. They'd, they'd, 
they'd understood that God was God was at work among them. But now they were listening to what God wanted of them, what God required of them as people. First they worshipped and then they listened. And then it was explained to them or applied to them. Good preaching um, or, or teaching of any sort, you know, just applies God's word to our lives. The result seems to be that the people were challenged. They, they ended up weeping. They, I suppose they were aware of how far they'd wandered from faith in God. But this was a day of restoration, as with the walls. This was a day of God's grace and mercy. And uh, they were encouraged to celebrate the goodness of God among them with joy. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that in these days we would take your word seriously, just as the people around Nehemiah did. That we wouldn't just pick and choose what suits us, but we'd allow your word to challenge and convict us. They read through those five books. They didn't skip chapters or names like I've done tonight. Lord, I pray that um, we'd listen to your word and that we would apply it to our lives in these days. I want to thank you so much for your grace and mercy towards us. Thank you that as well as this being a time of weeping, I suppose, when, we, when we're when we aware of our shortcomings, joy comes in the morning and that, that it's also a great joy and celebration to know that we're loved by you with an everlasting love and that you're for us and that you care for us. And Lord, there is joy in serving Jesus. Lord, you've done so many awesome and great things in our lives that we do worship you. But we do pray in these days that you would change us and transform us into the image of Jesus and use even this time of lockdown to speak into our lives. We want to pray for your church, Lord. Um, we want to pray whatever church you're from, but I'm talking about the church in general, Lord, that we, you'd help us to be, to, to be open to what you're saying to us as, as, as congregations and as, as communities of believers, that we would be attentive to what you want to say to us, that we would celebrate with joy the victory we have in Jesus too, but be willing to change our ways and our traditions and the way we've always done things to fit into your ways and the way you are leading us forward in these days. I want to pray locally for our own church here at Medahead that we would play our part in bringing your words to this great city of Sheffield and explaining it clearly to those around us, um, young and old, who can understand it. I want to pray that you, we would also work together with the other churches to see the good news of the gospel proclaimed in word and deed uh, in, in this area, Lord. And I just pray for us as Christians. We've been through a lot of heartache through this lockdown. I pray that you would restore the joy of our salvation, Lord. Restore the joy of our salvation. I want to pray, um, picking up some of the ideas that were on the um, the video today, for the mission of, of the church in general to children and young people. I want to pray for children and youth workers based in churches and, and centres and in the community itself. Lord, that you'd be with them at this time. It's been very frustrating when they've been unable to meet in the ways they did before. I pray that you'd encourage them and help them in lockdown to, to discover ways of being able to communicate and engage with young people. I pray that young people would engage also with their leaders in Jesus' name. I want to pray, Lord, that uh, that as they reconnect with, with our young people, Lord, um, that, Father, that, that they would see some great things happening in lives, Lord. We pray for our children and our young people in our communities. Lord, we long to see many of them come to salvation. We want those who strayed away from you to come back to you, Lord. I want those who have a, a living faith in you to be strengthened and deepened in that faith. We want to pray for Christian holiday clubs and centres, and particularly in our area, we pray for the great work that the Oaks has done up at Norton for, for children and young people in, in bringing many to a living faith in Jesus. We want, to, we want to pray a blessing upon the team there. Thank you for the people from our own church who are involved, and we just pray a blessing upon them as well. We pray for provision for them, particularly financially at this time, I pray that you would undertake to meet all their needs in Jesus' name. But they represent other centres around our country and conference centres, Christmas 
Christian conference centres. Lord, it's a tough time for them. We pray in Jesus' name. You'd be with those places that provide conference facilities and uh, bless them in Jesus' name. We want to pray again for the elderly, those living in assisted accommodation or sheltered accommodation. Uh, in our area, Lord, I'm thinking of Little Norton is a particular area where this happens, uh, where Painted Fabrics is, where we've done over 25 years of work and we've got real connections, deep connections with individuals and with a community and a little kind of church group that we've established there. But we want to thank you for those in assisted living, young and old in our area, Lord, and particularly in the Little Norton area. Father, we pray for your protection upon them. As we think of painted fabrics, we think of other care homes again. And we pray, Lord, at this time, wrap your protection around these places which are vulnerable to the COVID virus in Jesus' name. We thank you that the RA uh, may be the same, but uh, it seems as if, you know, the, the, the governments are lowering the, um, the, the rate down to three at the moment. Lord, we just pray that's done with wisdom and that you'd help to guide and lead government as they make decisions at this time. But Father, our prayer is for those who are uh, living, who need help at this time. And we pray that those who are coming in to care for them, those who are, are, are providing care in sheltered accommodation, Lord, you'd bless staff and you'd bless residents in Jesus' name, particularly be with that, that dear community at Painted Fabrics. Again, we pray. We pray that soon we'd be able to reestablish our services and our friendship and our meetings there. And we pray your blessing upon the team who faithfully served there for many years. Norton's an area where many people live alone. Many of them have lost partners, husbands and wives. There are people also suffering from depression and anxiety in our area and fear. Lord, I want to pray for those in our area and in our community for peace. I want to pray that people would feel secure in their own homes. I want to pray you protect them in their own homes and protect them on the streets, Lord. And we ask for your blessing upon many of these dear folk. A lot of them really love you, Lord, and we, we just pray you would be with them at this time, particularly where, because of lockdown, they may not have had access to family and friends in the way they normally do. We again pray for schools in our area, and we thank you for staff and pupils who've returned, and we pray again for blessing and protection. And I just want to pray for real wisdom for schools, uh, as the government are wanting all kids back in September, it's a great aspiration, uh, but practically where I'm looking on, there's a lot of work needs to be done to make that even a possibility. Um, and that's not meant as a criticism of government, it's just the practical ramifications with uh, social distancing and everything. So Lord, please give wisdom, please enable schools to, to, to be able to do this um, uh, as there's a limited staff as well as limited, um, limited space for kids at this time. But we long to see all our children back in school in September, Lord. So hear our prayer for that. And uh, we do pray for the more children to be returning now who can go back to school. Particularly we want to pray for children from the BAME community, the BAME community, Lord. Um, as I hear, you know, locally that many parents are not sending their kids back because of fear, uh, because they're more vulnerable for the virus. Lord, please be with them and bless them at this time. And uh, we know there's real genuine concern in, in, in the community. We pray peace for those who are, who are fearful at this time. And I do want to pray for children and parents who are not eligible to return to school at this time. And the challenges there are for homeschooling and the challenges there are for kids who live in, in uh, pretty poor conditions. Some of them are pretty challenging conditions, at risk conditions, but not able to access school because they're not in the right year groups, some of them. Lord, we pray for, for protection and blessing and peace in homes in Jesus' name. And we want to pray for our local communities. Let's all of us pray for our local communities. I want to pray a blessing on all those who live in this area. Pray a blessing over your area too. I want to, Lord, I ask you to reveal the truth of who you are in this area. We want to pray, Lord, that many would come to love you and to know you. We pray for safety on our local streets, Lord and in homes and um, on the on the roads around here, Lord. We pray you would watch over people, particularly as some, you know, youngsters are going out on scooters and, and mopeds, uh, you know, uh, without proper protection themselves. Lord, we just want to pray for, <coughs> for safety on our roads in Jesus' name. 
And we do want to pray for local small businesses in our area, Lord, that you would protect them and keep them going too. Lord, I thank you that uh, as, our, as a church here, we're, we're at the gateway to the city, standing uh, on the right at the south of Sheffield, just off the main thoroughfare in from the south, the A61. We want to pray, Lord, for our city as a gateway at the moment. And we want to pray blessing on the commerce and trade of our great city. I want to pray for entrepreneurs to step forward, um, to, to create businesses and to create jobs. We pray for investment in our country and in our nation and in our communities. And you want to pray in your area for entrepreneurs and for investment and for businesses and for blessing upon businesses. Lord, we're looking for jobs, for those who need jobs at this time, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that um, new businesses, new small businesses, new large businesses would emerge from this economic crisis, Lord. And the opportunities that are there, Father, will be quickly identified and that people would be able to, um, to step in the gap, as it were, um, in terms of business. And Lord, uh, we also want a, a couple of prayer requests tonight to people who regularly pray with us. David um, over in Liverpool, who's been volunteering, delivering prescriptions. The local hospital is in a lot of pain tonight with gout. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for healing for David uh, in your precious name. Lord, bless him, protect him. Father, quickly heal him from this condition, very painful condition in Jesus' name. And Tracy has a friend called Julie. And her and her family are really upset at the moment because dad, Len, has gotten an inoperable cancer. We've been praying for Len over the nights we were praying. Father, we want to pray for the family, for Julie and the family. Lord, that pray give them peace, be with them, comfort them at this time. And for Len, Lord, I don't know if he knows you or not, Lord, please just be with him. Be his peace, Father, and help him through this situation. We ask in Jesus' name, be all he needs. Father, hear our prayer for this dear family. In your precious name. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Sing this song together, God of this city. <clears throat> You're the God of this city, you're the King of his people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are, you're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are, there is no one like God. to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation, you are, and you're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are, there is no one like God. Greater things have yet to 
come. Greater things are still to be done here. Thanks again for joining me to pray. I'll look through the comments and pray them th through with you after this is finished. Just a reminder that there is no prayer meeting tomorrow night. Um, tomorrow night, Saturday night, we are not having a prayer meeting, but we will be back on Sunday evening at seven o'clock. Thanks again. I say the grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.